Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Kinexus Continuous Improvement Podcast. I'm Mark Graven. Today, we are doing a preview of our next webinar. It's a, a panel discussion webinar format. It's titled Cultivating a Culture of Learning from Mistakes. It's going to be held Thursday, July 27th, 1 to 2 o'clock Eastern, if you are able to join us live. You can register for that at kinexus.com slash webinars or look in the, the show notes or the video description for the specific link. If you are listening to or watching this after July 27th, uh, you, you'll be able to go check out the recording either through this podcast feed or the YouTube channel. So I'm really excited. Uh, we, we're going to have four panelists from Kinexus. We're joined by one of those panelists today for the quick preview. But on Thursday, we're going to have Kim Giuliotti. She's the director of product for Kinexus. Maggie Millard, vice president of customer experience. Linda Vaccaro, a senior lean strategist. And joining us today, Greg Jacobson, one of the co-founders and our CEO. Greg, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. I'm really, really excited about our panel coming up. I think it's a compelling topic. I think what's interesting is we have a number of people that are joining that have 10, 15 years or 15 plus years of experience in some really varied areas, right? We have a, we have someone that has a lot of lean background in multiple different industries. We have someone who, and, and um, that, that of course is, is Lynn Vaccaro and then, and then um, Kim Giliotti. Interestingly enough, she, she was going down the PhD route hmm. and kind of fell into product and has 10 plus years of experience with product. And then and Maggie Millard, who has probably done every job here at Kinexus, um, <laughs> and we always joke we'll we'll all be working for Maggie um, someday. <laughs> but yeah, really a provocative conversation. Yeah, we're going to be talking a lot, I think, about the culture at Kinexus, which you know is, um, I've tried to highlight in different ways. I, I think you know it's a, a noteworthy environment to try to share. But yeah, I think we'll we'll all have opportunities to kind of reflect on um, other workplaces and common themes and common threads of uh, not just learning from Kinexus, but what others can do to try to have a culture of learning from mistakes. I think it's interesting. I'm just thinking a little bit about kind of my thoughts here. Um, so one, one your, your podcast um, has, has really got me thinking a lot about mistakes when, when you had me had me on it. And, um, and I mean, oh, I should, I should just mention um, your, the book um, that you have that, that just came out, oh. The Mistakes That Make Us. Oh. And uh, I think, Funny you um, should mention. Here, I'll hold a copy. I have a copy handy. There we go. Yeah. Love artistry on that, by the way. I'm very, very crafty. But, but I, I think it's interesting. Um, I, there used to be in the, the startup kind of culture or startup, um, community there maybe it was up what four five six years ago there everyone was talking about failure and um and oh yeah. you, you i don't I, I don't ever invest in uh, someone that has a startup unless they failed a couple times and mm -hmm. we had to, that, that always really frustrated me because mm -hmm. um, failure is um is something i never i'm never looking for failure or or want failure obviously we can't be afraid to move forward because of failure but I really like the fact that um, you have gotten really curious about mistakes. Yeah. Because mistakes feel um, they like they have less weight than failure. I mean, failure seems so like stick, and the mistake feels like oh, it's something that happens, and oh, let's let's go explore it, and let's let's see what we can learn from it. And so I think there's a, just a huge amount that we can we can think about and learn from mistakes. Yeah, failure is I think very like absolute sounding. Um, where I, I think if, if we're able to learn from mistakes and adjust, we can prevent big failures or we, we can maybe have small scale failures. You know, they're, they're, you're, you're right. There's a lot of this language, you know, Silicon Valley language or, or tech startup language. Um, fail early, fail often. Like, I don't, well, don't want to fail often, right? I mean, maybe fail early, learn improve, pivot, whatever word you want to use, like, you know, fail early, then succeed. Right. Or, or um, maybe, maybe just instead of, you know, I think what it, what it, now that I'm thinking about it, as we're talking through it, I think that there is a, um, 
in the startup world, you, you, you envision kind of going down these, these routes, these paths. And if, if you have some kind of, like if you're omniscient and, and you knew where the path was going to end up, instead of having to go down the 10 miles, the 20 miles, the 100 miles of the path, and then find out you're not in a good place, I think the, the thought there would be, oh, if, if you could somehow figure out uh, yeah. in the first mile or the second mile, but that's just not how life works, mm -hmm. right? In, in one, there isn't some set path, right? We, we talk about lean, we talk about um, continuous improvement, we talk about that being a journey. And a journey um, really signifies that there is an infinite number of places that you could end up going. And so I think, um, I think I, I still want to say that I do not like the concept of um, fail early, fail fast. And I really like the concept of um, not being paralyzed by indecision, recognize you are going to make mistakes. You'll probably make numerous mistakes um, um, throughout the day. I, I made a mistake of sitting on a chair that has this weird squeak and I can't move in my chair. <laughs> You're doing a good job of keeping still. I haven't heard it. <laughs> So I think it's a it's a it's a really I'm really excited to I, I've read different parts of of the book coming out, but I'm really excited to to dive into um, you know the entire text. Oh, and you had just mentioned not to, to bring up your book again and go backwards in our conversation. Okay. Uh, um, had had done the audio um, aspects of that. What what mistakes happened there that you uh -huh. learned? Oh, you cut out with that last part. What mistakes did I learn from what? Mistakes happen when you did the audio portion that you, that you oh. learned from that for your next book. I'm already talking about your next book. Um, <laughs> no, or maybe mistakes that happen that you could you could bring into your podcasting mm -hmm. um, realm and your webinar realm and and improve those. Yeah, I mean, I'm personally not real shy about admitting mistakes, especially when there's something to be learned from them. I've made a lot of podcasting mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes with the book and. Um, you catch a lot of those mistakes. You know, there's professional copy editing and there's proofreading. And then when I sat down or I was standing up in a sound booth to really read through the book for the purposes of doing audio recording, we found on average maybe like one little thing, one little mistake per chapter that still got through the proofreading. Like minor, minor stuff, but okay, well, you you, you make a note and you record it the way it should be. And then there's a cycle of iteration now with the, 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 the book in Kindle format and print formats, um, you know, in a print on demand world, the book is like software. You can put out a new release. None of the mistakes were bad enough to like try to recall you know, what was already out there, but, um, but yeah, so then there were mistakes that were found and then there were mistakes made in the, in the course of reading. Mistakes that I would notice and um, go back and, you know, we, we would redo. There would be mistakes the audio engineer noticed that I hadn't noticed. So he would stop me and would go try again. But then as he was going through and doing the editing, he found six or seven little tiny minor things that I actually had to come back into the studio then to reread. He'll do the editing and 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 fix it. And it's just like saying one word when I should have said another word. Like you're, you know, if you I think if you're reading smoothly, you're looking ahead a little bit of not just word, 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 word. But then I think inevitably sometimes your brain gets, uh, your, your your mouth gets ahead of uh, your eyes or, or vice versa. And I just read the wrong word. So um, all fixable. And I'd say those are little mistakes, but there was no failure. I wouldn't call it that. Yeah, I think, I think it's important uh, if you're creating a culture, I, I don't want to go as far as to say to celebrate mistakes, but I, I do think I'd go as far as to say to celebrate learning from mistakes. Yes. And that I think that it's, it's a slight nuance mm -hmm. there, yep. but I, that's important because it, all of a sudden now a mistake becomes an opportunity for not only for yourself, but for your entire team or even the entire company um, to learn from and hopefully not do again. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and celebrating the learning and the progress. Um, yeah. I think we, we can, we can strike the right balance. Um, you know, there's some settings, I mean, you still work as a um, ER doc and you actually lend it an example. It's in the book of like, you know, giving the wrong dose of a medication to a patient 
you don't want to, I mean, th those are things we would consider preventable. We don't want to quote unquote celebrate it, but we certainly need to make sure people feel open to disclose what happens so that we can learn from it and prevent the next version of that error that could be really harmful to a patient. We can celebrate the learning. And that, that's such a great example of oftentimes the, the mistake can uncover a process issue right. that even though that mistake, even though you gave 800 milligrams of ibuprofen and you only meant to give 400 milligrams, the chance that that was going to like create negative um, impact to, to um, your patient is, is pretty low. But you know, maybe it's not ibuprofen, <laughs> you know, maybe it's a cardiac arrhythmic medication that you know, doubling the dose of literally could kill someone. Yeah. And that same process problem that happened that led you to go from 800 to 400 of ibuprofen would be the exact same process that could allow you to double um, a cardiac medication. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think there's different types of mistakes. And I tried to explore this in the book of some of the the nuance of, let's say, um, uh, a mistake in a repeatable manufacturing process that would cause a quality problem or um, you know, a mistake in a healthcare process. Th those are a different environment than when we're trying to innovate or do things um, in a new way where the risk of a quote unquote mistake is low. Like, you know, if, if we don't celebrate, maybe we, you know, we could embrace or even cherish those mistakes. And I've I, so many guests who've come on my favorite mistake have said, you know, if you're not making any mistakes, you're not really innovating. And I think for, you know, that, that context matters sometimes too. You're probably not only not innovating, but you're probably not being honest with yourself or the <laughs> Like I just, <laughs> humans are fall, fall, fallible. Um, and uh, to say that you're, someone makes no mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Absolute, that absolutist you, it always makes you raise an eyebrow. Yeah. Um, so I will point in the show notes again, um, Greg's episode uh, when, when he was uh, a guest on my favorite mistake. And, um, you know, usually people have one story, sometimes, sometimes two, you know, Greg, you were an overachiever. You had, you had five favorite mistakes that will encourage people to go and listen to. And it's not that the episode was five times longer than usual, but you, you shared a lot. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember the five mistakes I gave. I, I feel like one of them was go do your own due diligence. Don't, don't make a decision because someone else made the decision. I remember that one. Um, one was about read. I think you said in the past you didn't read enough. Oh, Come yeah. And the thing is, is um, the way I've solved that, Mark, interestingly enough, is that I have turned to a habit of um, of listening. And so mm -hmm. now with the amount of podcasts and the amount of um, audio books, it's, it's really allowed me to um, solve that mistake, if you will. And mm -hmm. I'm able to consume way more than I would have ever. Um, I think someone with some one of them may have been about giving feedback early i don't know if that was one of them that's a, a mistake i had made in the past and um i, I try not to, to do that again so it sounds like i might need to go back to that episode and, and remember um, i always think you have you have five fingers on a hand as, assuming you are phenotypically um the way most humans are then um why not have five mistakes that you get right yeah. <laughs> so so I'll put a link to that episode again. And, you know, there are stories, um, some of which we might touch on during uh, the, the panel on Thursday, or at least to talk about um, the culture. And, you know, there are some of those stories uh, in the book. The book, again, is uh, The Mistakes That Make Us. So, you know, thank you, Greg, and others at, at Kinexus who um, are working to cultivate this culture and helping generate stories that help illustrate that culture. So I'm um, happy to be able to share that with people. And I, I hope it's helpful and inspiring. Again, like no company is perfect. I mean, I, I feel safe saying this to Greg as a co-founder and CEO. Kinexus isn't perfect. Nobody's perfect, but there, there are good things going on. And we'll continue cultivating the garden, if you will, right? Absolutely. Well, I... I hope this has compelled you enough to to listen in to the the longer form and probably with um, smarter people we're we're bringing in some people to to round this out that I think have some varied experience and will will add to this conversation quite nicely. Yeah. So again, that's going to be Thursday, July twenty seventh, one o'clock Eastern panel discussion on cultivating a culture of 
learning from mistakes, myself, Greg, three Kinexians, three other Kinexians, um, leaders and, and senior leaders in the organization. And then I'm going to throw this out as a teaser for Thursday, because I love there's something Greg shared with me that I uh, quoted him as saying in the book. I agree with the statement. I'm going to ask Greg to elaborate on Thursday in the panel. You can't have a culture of continuous improvement without learning from mistakes. So that, I, I summed it up quite nicely and we'll <laughs> do uh, to exploring that uh, further and, and really unpacking that. So yeah. um, thank you, Mark, for putting this on and making this happen. And I, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. So again, you can go to kinexus.com slash webinars. If you're listening or watching before July 27th, you can look for um, the registration link. If you're finding this afterwards, you want to go check out that longer discussion, you'll be able to find it in the Kinexus uh, webinar library. Um, go to kinexus.com slash webinars. Look for uh, the, the big old button that says webinar recording library. So, Greg, thank you for doing the preview today. And thanks in advance for Thursday. Thank you, Mark. And I'll see you next time. Next time. <laughs>